Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, my first time in Seattle, and it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I must thank Global Partnership for making me feel at home with this wonderful Irish weather. We've got sunshine, we've got rain, you're going to have snow later on, I'm sure. You get four seasons in one day. And we call it in Ireland the good soft day, is what we would term it, okay? Anyway, I digress. I would like, over the course of the next 10 or 12 minutes, to talk to you a little bit about who we are, the challenges we face, how we address those challenges, and more importantly, the impact we have on people's lives. Our story begins in 1946. Eklov International started in 1946 as a foundation in Switzerland. It was set up by two private bankers and a theologian who later became the first general secretary of the World Council of Churches. And it was in response to the need after the Second World War to rebuild churches, orphanages, schools, hospitals, health, health centers in Europe, which had been destroyed and needed repair after the Second World War. I think the first loans were done to uh, 12 pastors for houses. Um, the first minutes, this minute is the original from 73 years ago. And interesting enough, you were talking, Rick, earlier on about uh, the evolution, shall we say, of impact investing. There's a nice, no, nice note in the minutes thanking John Rockefeller Jr. for his significant contribution to Eklov International at that time. We started in, in, 1940, in 1946, we started with churches, schools, hospitals. The work was in Central Europe. Um, and then gradually towards the end of the 19. 50s, early 60s, we expanded that work into the developing world. And we first we went into uh, Myanmar, Tanzania, Argentina. I'm not sure what the rationale was, but that's where they started off in the international side. And this work in the international side was the same sort of institutional type of lending we were doing. What was happening was churches in North America we're getting funding and providing that to Eklof International in Geneva, and we, on turn, lent that to the various countries. And that model persisted up to maybe the mid or the late 1970s, when at that stage, Eklof then started to move into what is the traditional type of microfinance in terms of lending to individuals, lending to groups. And that's the model that from the late 1970s persisted and persists today. We, we lost our way in the early 2000s. And the model within microfinance had changed dramatically. In the, in the good old days, it was all about grants. And then we started getting into this double bottom line about social work, impact, sustainability, well-governed. And as an institution in those days, we probably were not um, culturally in tune with what was happening, what was taking place. So there was a big reorganization that took place around the end of 2010. A new board, a new management team came in. Um, and we have, over the course of the last nine years, addressed all those issues. And we're moving quite well today. Today, we are a, a network of 13 microfinance institutions. We have got five in Latin America, Car Caribbean. We got five in... Asia, Southeast Asia, and we've got three in Africa. We have a very, very simple but a very important mission. And it's what defines us as an organization and what defines us in the work we do. And the mission is to very much is to promote social justice and human dignity through microfinance. I'll return to that later on in the presentation. Our focus is to reach out to vulnerable communities, communities that are excluded from financial access, communities that are predominantly in rural areas, and to women. And we would have, over the last 13 years, we would have dispersed, probably in the order, in the network in the 13 countries, about $250 million in loans. 
So that would have probably, if you take an average loan size of $500, that's probably a half a million loans, if my maths are right. And if you take impact, five or six of family, that's the sort of the impact we've had, or the network's had in the last five years. Today, 70% of our loans are to women. 60% of our loans are in the rural areas. And our network today serves about 150, 160,000 customers and has, a, has its own loan portfolio of about 45 million. Our role, based in Geneva, is the strategic partner, the key investor in our network. We basically get the funding from people like Global Partnerships. We on lend that to our countries, and that's the cycle that we go through. So that is the organization very, very briefly. And you could say, and something we're very proud of to say, is that ECLOF was one of the pioneers in microfinance in the world. So that's a little bit about the organization. Let me talk briefly about what are challenges we face. Microfinance is a, is a wonderful, it's a motive, it's passionate. It's a business which is very challenging. We spoke earlier on, Rick alluded to in his presentation about poverty. And we speak in terms of people living below the $1.90 poverty line. And the last numbers and figures that I saw was from the World Bank a couple of years ago, and they spoke in the order of 700 million people below the poverty line. And Rick spoke earlier about the people on the, above the 550 level or below the 550 level. We seek about 800 million malnourished people in the world. We seek about 1.2 million or billion rather women who are excluded from financial services. And it really is a shame that today in 2019 that we stand as a generation which hasn't really addressed some of those problems. There has been tremendous improvement in lowering the poverty rates, primarily in India and primarily in China. But there is a vast, vast road ahead and it needs to be addressed and it needs to be tackled. We face that challenge the people in the field face that challenge. In a, in a previous life, I was a commercial banker. Banking wasn't very popular at times. Um, an easy profession compared to microfinance. If you want to lend 50 million, 100 million, just get the lawyers in the room, close the door, and let them sign the agreements. Simple. Go and lend $200. Go and lend $500 to a farmer in a rural area. Go and service that loan over six months, over one year. Go to that customer when natural calamities strike, typhoons, drought, famine, floods. We have them. It's in microfinance. These are vulnerable rural communities who are exposed to all of the climatic tragedies that occur in the world. These are the people impacted by this. So the farmer who's up there, he's got a small loan, drought comes, famine comes, floods come. He's back to scratch again, and away we go again, and away we go again. And that's the challenge about microfinance. And that's the challenge that we in ECLOF International, through our network, are trying to address. So, how, how do we do this? At times, I'm not very sure, but we try. <laughs> Firstly, what I would say to you is that our mission and our focus is clear. Promote social justice and human dignity. 
That drives us. That motivates us. That's what we're about. That's what we do. That's the decisions that are taken every day in Eklov National and in the network. Is this promoting social justice? Is this giving people an opportunity to try and improve their lives? Is it giving an opportunity to increase their income, access to educational, other services, which I'll speak about later? So that's one key area in terms of how we address the challenge that we've got this mission as our focus. We position ECLOF as strongly governed and sustainable, socially orientated organization. Strongly governed and sustainable is a given. If you're not strongly governed and you're not sustainable, then you'll not be able to do what you want to do. So our focus has been socially centered. It's based on three approaches. Firstly, we target the population we want to serve. We target women, we target rural areas, we target vulnerable communities, and I explained earlier on how 60% of our loans are in rural areas, 70% of our loans are to women. Secondly, and this is probably what distinguishes us from a lot of other microfinance institutions or networks, and probably is why we have a good relationship with global partnerships. We provide financial and non-financial services, and the non-financial services are probably the most important. That services, like Rick spoke earlier on, technical support to our customers, how to increase the farming yield, nutrition, veterinary services, financial literacy, all these types of service. And it's, it's, it is not, no coincidence that in, in Kenya, where we are very active in this sort of area of non-financial services, we have a portfolio at risk in Kenya of about 7%. The market is 12%. In Colombia, we have a portfolio and risk in Colombia at 3%. The market is 11%. And that's because we provide this added service to our customers. There's loyalty to our customers and there's a relationship with our customers. And the third pillar, which I'll speak about later, is about our social performance management. And I'm going to talk about that in a bit more detail, and it's very important to the last session. What I'd like to do just now is briefly to show you a film about our work. It's our work uh, throughout the network. It's a short, edited version of what we do. So please, when you're ready. People living in poverty have a need for a range of financial services like everybody else. We, in Eklof, to our global network of microfinance organizations, enable access to financial and non-financial services for those disadvantaged or vulnerable communities who may not be able to access the more traditional source of finance, especially those who are living in rural and remote areas. One area where we particularly focus is support in agriculture as it is in the rural areas where most of the world's poor and hungry live. 50% of the world's 800 million undernourished people are smallholder farmers. While we know at the same time, small farms produce around 80% of the food consumed in sub-Saharan Africa and Asia. So enhanced smallholder agriculture can offer a route out of poverty for rural populations while increasing food security for the local population. We train our clients on practical skills like organic agriculture, which enables our clients to produce healthy food and earn higher income on their production. I mean, nga kakadwak nga grupo, tulong at tayo ti kakadwa tayo, ano lumang ay tayo mata, adati ko ah kordirira. In many countries where we operate, basic infrastructure such as access to water is missing. So we do finance infrastructure like a water tank that enables farmers to harvest rainwater and feed their animals. Hata ngombe azikuwa zikipata maji. Lakini sasa hivi tangu niingie kwa Ecolof. 
Eklov clients would usually start with very small loans of between 100 and 200 US dollars. But over time, with the help of further loans, we see our clients graduate to larger businesses which offer and provide greater opportunities to the family. To date, really, microfinance and financial inclusion has made significant progress. It has really demonstrated its uh, ability to reach and serve low income and poor people globally. Institutions have been developed and have really been brought to the mainstream. This is where I see ECLOF as an institution playing even a bigger role, being at the front line in carving out new initiatives, new products, new services of how to support low income and poor people. However, while global poverty has declined, and we very much welcome that decline, unfortunately, it still persists in far too many places today. So our mission, which started over 72 years ago, still remains valid and will remain valid in the foreseeable future. And ECLOF will continue to have a role in serving the marginalised and vulnerable communities that are left behind. I'm just about finished. I think I'm more or less finished. I'm getting my card telling me it's time's up. Forgive me, I'm Irish. I speak a lot. I want to finish very quickly. Give me two minutes, please. Um, are we making a difference? Are we making an impact? That's what it's about. Are we making a difference on the ground? I've given you some numbers, some figures. I believe we are making an impact. Um, but what I want to talk very briefly about is social performance. Um, we have an active social performance program throughout our network. It combines two elements. Firstly, we conduct social audits in all our organisations, where we audit the organisation against what are termed the universal standards of social performance management, the microfinance industry standards. So we monitor how they're performing against that, and we, where, we, where there's weaknesses, we correct and we change where necessary. But the most important one is we produce these booklets, social performance booklets, where we have a whole series of indicators and in countries to see are we reaching out. And just to give you some examples, this is one in, where is this? This is Kenya. 30% of our clients live on less than $1.25 a day. 60% live on less than $2.25 a day. 57% are women. We look here and we come into Colombia. 65% of ECLOF Colombia's clients are under the government subsidized health scheme. At the same numbers in other countries. I'm short of time, I must respect the next speaker, but the last comment I'm gonna make is a photograph on the screen there about impact. And this is kind of maybe the human side of it. It's a photograph of a client of ours in Kenya called Edwin. Edwin Mariti. He's in a branch called Embu Branch, which is about 150 kilometers north east of Nairobi. Embu started off cleaning latrines for his neighbors. Ekloff went into that village. They set up a group lending scheme in the village. Edwin took a first loan to buy a cow. That went reasonably well. He was able to get sell milk, sell calves, and generate an income. Edwin then got a second loan, and he bought a second cow, and the cow's name was called Lois, after the loan officer. <laughs> Edwin then has gone on subsequently to purchase land uh, to provide fodder for his cattle, and then, like any good businessman, Edwin diversified his risk. Edwin then got some land and started to grow a tea plantation. So don't ever think that poor people are not smart, they're not creative. These people think on their feet and they survive. Edwin now generates an income close to six, seven hundred dollars a month. The picture you see there of him, his wife, his two children, and his kids now go to a private school and are educated. That's the measure of impact. Thank you very much.